This is Maddie. She is a schnauzer and we are going to give her the popular toy schnauzer trim. So let's get busy. The toy schnauzer trim is a pet trim. I'm going to use a 7F blade and clip with the grain. The pattern lines stay higher on this style. This is what I love about pet grooming. There's a lot of freestyle grooming and pet grooming, and there's a lot of variations that we can do. You have whisker nodules, one here, one here, and one here. I clip from those nodules back. Because I'm using a 7F blade, I do not have to worry about clipping right over the cowlicks because I'm going to come back in in these tighter areas with a tin blade and clean that up. We will be adding several variations to schnauzer trims this fall, so stay tuned to our channel. We will have lots of fun schnauzer trims coming up. I'm taking the top of the head with a seven blade. You want to be careful as you approach the ears and stay back from the ear leather because a seven blade will nick the ears. I'm using the seven blade under the tail being very careful to just pick, pick, pick around the anus. We're not taking the blade straight over the anus. We're going around it. We'll come back in and clean this up with a tin. Coming up under the vulva, lifting one leg up to kind of stretch that skin out, making it easier access. All right, we're gonna go get her in the tub, get her all washed and blow dried and ready for a haircut. We're going to give her a nice shampoo and conditioning treatment. She has some matting in her legs. I'm hoping the conditioner will help me to get the matting out after the bath. I use an ear cleansing solution in the ears. I fill up each ear, rub the base of the ear, and allow the dog to shake its head to get it out. And we wrap her up in a nice Turkish cotton towel for that true spa experience. <laughs> It's a good girl. It's a good girl. Yes, 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 yes. I know. It's the best part, huh? Yes. It's the best part. Yes, yes. It's the best part. Yeah. All right. Gotta get dry. We're going to blow dry her using nice warm air and a brush, and then trim her nails, and use a nail drill to file the rough edges off the nails. <laughs> You're 
silly. You silly girl. Nobody knows. <laughs> Good girl. Good girl. important if you're going to keep this much hair on your schnauzer that you are perfect at keeping the hair brushed and combed. If you are not perfect at keeping the hair brushed and combed, you will not be able to maintain this much hair. It is a chore. It's a labor of love and it takes a lot of dedication. We're going to trim her ears from the skull up into the center of the ear with a 15 blade. When I'm trimming the ears, I go center up, center out, center out. Never come this way on the ears, never cut in, never go against the grain on the ears, always to the end of, ends of the ear. Otherwise you will cut the ear. Same on the inside. Many schnauzers tend to have a little string of skin right in here. You always wanna feel, make sure that they don't have that little string of skin. If they do, you have to be very careful cutting around it. Now I'm using a 30 blade to edge out around the outer ear, getting it nice and tight. I don't like to use the closer blade up in here because of sensitivity, but as we get to the edges of the ears, we can go closer. Going center up, center out, center out. And if you notice how I hold the ears, I have a thumb on the inside, my fingers on the outside, and I use my fingers as I go up the ear to brace the ear. 
And as I slide the clipper off the ear, I'm also sliding my fingers up the ear at the same time. It also helps the dog to feel much more secure if you've got them held gently and comfortably. In this area here, I will go against the grain with the ear held firmly against the head. Just right at the very opening of the ear. Girl. I want to edge out around the eyebrows. For this hairstyle on a schnauzer, I do keep shorter, blunter trimmed eyebrows, but we outline them the same way. Right about where this whisker nodule is and the beard comes to, I'm going to take a five blade against the grain and arc out in a half moon shape around the eyebrow. I'm also going to take this five blade against the grain up the cheeks here. Up under the jawline. And I'm skimming off as I get towards the beard. Good girl. Now I'm going to go back over the entire pattern with my seven blade. Coming down over the shoulders, skimming the pattern off higher than your regular schnauzer trim. Rounding over the rib cage and skimming off. Keeping your pattern line higher on the back leg. Good girl, Maddie. You notice I'm stretching the skin up ahead of the clipper, wherever you have looser skin. That's part of the reason why I turn the head a little bit as I'm coming down this way. Just pulls the skin a little tighter. A difference in this trim is I do leave a very full chest. So I keep my chest line up very high. Turn the belly. There we go. This area under the tail here where the hair grows straight up, I'm going to take my five blade and come down on that. Going over these curly cues by the tail with my five. Coming back with my seven, 
and not going over this area, but coming in through here and just blending that down. And then coming around the vulva again and over the tail. Here as I pick up the tail, this time I'm gonna come downwards with my seven on the tail on the underside just to get it closer here. Not running over the rectum, just going around it. Now I'm gonna come up and out and up and out. She's like, woohoo! <laughs> now I'm going to take a 40 blade and go over the very edges of the ears with my 40 to get them even tighter because right now they look raggedy. Taking my straight shears, I'm going to clip off the edges around the ears, right up to the ear leather. As you can see, I'm holding the ear and I've got my fingers on the other side used as a guide to lay my scissors on. Good girl. Good girl. Good. Oh, that looks nice. You want to pull up this part of the ear and pull this down and get down here. It's an area often missed. That way you have those picture perfect ears. Combing the eyebrows down. I'm going to use my tin blade and I'm going to take my clipper on edge, hold one eyebrow over and come down on edge between the eyebrows. I'm using a tin blade here. Now I'm gonna arc back up with the grain and go back over that outline that I did with the five blade. And I'm trying to get as much of this black hair off as I can to accentuate the white in her black and silver eyebrows, which is really pretty. Now holding the eyebrows back, I'm going to use the corner of my blade, come up under and trim the corners of the eyes. As I'm doing this, I'm looking over the ears to see if there's any hair I might have missed. There we go. And for my eyebrows, I take from the corner of the nose to the corner of the eye and I angle them back. And again, I'm keeping short, blunt eyebrows on her. So I'm going to take off just the very tips to keep that blunt effect. Now holding the beard down. Let's go. I'm going to scissor off and blend the beard into the shaved areas and let the beard back loose. It's just a quick, easy way to get that done. Flip the ear up, pull this hair growing inside of the ears out and snip it off. No plucking here, folks. And as you can see, she has very healthy ears. I've been grooming her for over a year now, and I've never plucked her ears. Look at that. Healthy, healthy, healthy. Now I'm going to trim the pads of the feet with a 30 blade.
We'll repeat this on all four feet. And to have the nails as short as possible to get pretty feet on these dogs. Good girl. That's it. Good girl. Yes. Good dog. The use of a nail drill really helps to get the nails as short as possible. Good girl. Yes, a very good girl. Stand. Now we're going to bevel her feet. We want to keep a built out pretty foot, uh, similar to a Cocker Spaniel foot. Brushing the hair down through the toes. Trimming off anything that falls past the pads. Getting the front of the foot right up to the toenail, straight across. Staying away from this hair at the back of the foot for now. I will repeat this on all four feet. It's a very good puppy. I'm misting over the coat with an anti-static spray. Combing the coat straight down. And now I'll start rounding the feet with my scissors flat on the table. Getting the inside blade close to the foot, being very careful not to cut the foot. And bringing it out and around, keeping a rather big foot, but super tight as well, if that makes sense. Do the same on the back foot. I'm resting the outer side of the blade closest to the foot, right on the foot. But it's the outside of the blade, so it doesn't cut, see? It's where the tips go that you have to worry about. So when you're coming in like this, you wanna be careful where the tips of those scissors are snipping. But the outside of the blade, that does nothing. It's when you close it down that you have to worry. And yes, you have to worry, grooming shears are razor sharp. Now we're gonna comb the hair up and out to build out that flare. Now we're going to take our shears and round them up as we go. But before we do that, we wanna set the line of the bevel. So I'm going to switch to my blending shears and I'm going to Clip in my end point for that bevel. So as we start to build it up, it's going to have an end line right about in here. 
So we are setting the end point of that line. And my goal with her is to show off her pretty white feet and to accentuate her hock. So I'm taking this black hair and I'm giving it a line with the blending shears. Like so. Now, combing all this hair up and out again. We're going to round these feet from the floor up and out. To build them up. Give them that flare. And this also helps the feet from getting too wet while you have all this full coat. You know, you don't want the dog bringing in everything out of the yard. You don't want all this pretty silver hair on a black and silver schnauzer to be hidden. tricks that gives your work that extra style, that extra flair. I'm going to take this back foot, comb the hawk hair out. In my curved shears backwards, we're going to trim from the back pad up towards the hawk. So here you can see the difference of this side as opposed to this side. It just looks very trim and very groomed. Taking my blending shears, I'm gonna set in the top line of my bevels. And I am setting these a little extra high because I really wanna highlight the white feet. up and out. And start building up and out. On the foot. Here we're going to take the curved shears backwards, coming from the pad towards the hock. Turning my curve shears backwards here, just cutting a little bit on the back of the leg. And as you follow along with my tips, tricks, and techniques, I do use, you know, terminology of the structure of the dog. So it's important to familiarize yourself with the structure of the dog. Below this video, I will post a link to a blog where it will give the tools that I'm using and other information, including the terminology for the dog's body, which will help you. So 
So when viewed from the front, as we're getting these legs built out, you can see there is flow outward on this style with this full chest. We can build these feet coming this way on the inside of the leg. You wanna make sure this black matches on the front. So we're taking our blending shears again and just balancing that all out so that it's a nice smooth transition. I really don't do any scissoring on the furnishings. I simply will neaten the underline. So what I'm going to do is take my curved shears backwards again and coming up from the leg, I'm going to angle towards the last rib and then angle back down just to give it some style. So here. Taking my curved shears backwards, come in on the back of the leg to give her some bend there. And when I'm coming at it from this side, come up towards the last rib. need to check, check, and recheck the underline to make sure from a distance it looks nice and neat. Using our blending shears, we're going to blend the beard into the shorter areas. And some of these cowlicked areas can also be blended. for any hairs out of place. It's important to remember on schnauzers never to clip her against the grain and to remove some of the undercoat even when they're clippered. When they're clippered this short, using a carding knife is a little too aggressive and this haircut requires a shorter trim on the body. So to get the undercoat out on these, I use a pumice stone. And as you can see, there's no hair there now. As I run the pumice stone over the dog, holding the skin taut, you can see the hair starting to come out. And this is important for the health of the schnauzer to remove this soft downy undercoat. And there's not much there, but if you look closely as I'm going over the coat, it is lifting it up and out of the hair follicle. That clears out these hair follicles and allows for the darker, coarser hair to grow in, but it also helps to prevent schnauzer bumps, schnauzer comedio syndrome. Dogs who are predisposed to schnauzer comedio syndrome really need to keep these follicles clear, but it's healthy for all schnauzers to do this. So even if you're not hand stripping a schnauzer and you are clippering it, you still need to clear out those follicles. You don't want to be over aggressive with this. 
I would recommend doing this on your schnauzer at least once a week. If the hair starts to grow longer, you can then switch to a carding knife. But as the hair is real short, just use your pumice stone over the trunk of the body. That's a good girl. Thank you guys for watching. Be sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel where we give tips, tricks, and techniques on how to groom dogs. We upload at least five times a week. Thanks again for watching, guys. Bye.